What's going on, family? It's your girl, Garuji Chastity, and we are back with another Wild Heart Wednesday where I take a topic that's near and dear to my heart and I just let my imagination run wild. I let the wisdom just flow out of me, okay? And so today, I wanna talk about three symptoms of a mother wound. Like, we, we getting juicy on them today. I got notes and everything, y'all. Like, oh, wait, okay? It's going down, okay? So boom, first things first, three symptoms of a mother wound. As always on the Wild Heart Wednesday videos, I like to share my why, the reason why I've created the video in the first place. And today I got, I got a couple, okay? This is a underlying issue. Most people don't know that they have a mother wound because of the verbiage, okay? And so I feel like it's important for me to use this word as much as possible so people can learn to identify or articulate their experience. I know for me, before I started to do this work on my own, I, will, I would feel certain parts of this wound, but I didn't have the words. Or, you know, I always thought that I was the one tripping because I couldn't find the information or the resources to help me identify with what I was experiencing. And so it's like, for the other people out there who may be experiencing this, this is important for me to discuss and talk about, right? So that's reason number one. Number two, motherhood is a coveted position in life. Like, people revere the fact that women can have babies, and which they should, it's magical. You feel what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's a magical thing. But because this is such a magical capability and in turn creates such a coveted position and role in life, it's hard to give constructive criticism to mothers. As soon as you say something about somebody mama or about your own mama and what they could have done better, it's like World War Three or something, John, bro. It's like we can't even have the conversation. We can't even have straightforward honesty with a lot of our mothers because of the title, because of the position. And that's played out, if you ask me. You know, it's from one sister cat to another, one woman to another. You know what I'm saying? We should be able to talk and share our experiences without it being like, oh, I'm your mama, don't talk to me like that. Like, that's too much. Okay? And last but not least, this directly affects me. Okay? <laughs> so, yes, I'm talking about it to teach you, but it is in my self-expression. It is in sharing my wisdom that gives me more space to learn and grow about myself. Right? So, I love talking about this. Not just because it makes me feel empowered, because I feel like, hey, I know what I'm talking about, but because this helps me heal too, okay? So, let, without further ado, let's get into it. Sign number one that you have a mother wound is the inability to set boundaries, right? And the reason why you fail to set boundaries is because you don't feel worthy and so you fear losing love, right? And because you feel so worthless inside, it's like anybody who come and talk to you, you just gullible. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. You're just gullible, bro. You just gullible. You just talking to anybody, hanging out with anybody, dating anybody, right? Because you feel so worthless and you never really know when somebody gonna show interest in you. So it's like, ooh, somebody right here. And it's like, bro, that's, 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 that's not it. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's not it, right? And so the reason why we should set boundaries, it's not always to keep people out. It's to know where someone else begins and you end or vice versa, right? It's just, it's clear. It helps us connect on a more intentional level when we can see where I begin and you begin, where you end and I end. Right. But when when those lines are blurred and we can't tell who from who or what from what, inevitably, somebody's going to be taken advantage of. Inevitably, somebody's free will is going to be trampled upon. Right. And the whole purpose of having free will is so that you can do whatever you want without imposing on someone else. Right. And so sign number one <clears throat> that you're dealing with a mother wound is that you have no ability to set boundaries. And that shows up in your life by allowing anybody and everybody access to you, 
okay? You know what they say now, because everybody and their mama is woke, is that it's poor spiritual hygiene if you just hanging out with any and everybody. People should have to work to get towards you. But most times, people don't have to work to get towards you because you already feel worthless before somebody else coming over here. And it's the fact that someone else came over here that brings value to you. And that's how we know we got a problem. Okay? Y'all see the sun hitting me? Honey. Honey. Okay. Number two. Number two of a symptom of a mother wound is that you're insecure about your body or your physical appearance mainly because you don't look like your mom or you don't have her ideals of beauty or you, you're not upholding her ideals of beauty. And normally this is something very superficial that impacts us internally. For instance, I'm gonna show you, tell you how this showed up in my life. It was an external issue. I didn't dress like my mom. I, I wasn't interested in the things that she was interested in, right? And so my style and my swag and how I wanted to express myself felt small in comparison to the nice, fancy, look at me vibe that my mama got, right? Sis, be, sis, sis got the BMW, she got the red bottoms, the bags, and I'm like, take me to Walmart. Take me to Walmart, bro. Give me the Jesus sandals and let me rock out. You know what I'm saying? So because my expression felt so small in comparison to my mother's, my body felt like it was doing me a favor and packed on weight, right? Internally, it started doing its own thing internally so that I could take up space externally, okay? And so... It is in direct connection against, right? Looking at our mothers that shows us how we look at ourselves. And so when my mama would look at me, I felt small. I felt like, shit, I don't like that stuff that you like. I don't know, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know. Like, <laughs> so I felt small, I felt unseen, I felt unheard, I felt unsupported in what I wanted. And my body was like, hey, big dog, I, I can't have you out here feeling like that. So it made me 235 pounds. Now, that ain't hot, that ain't sexy, but it was innocent enough if you ask me. My body ain't no no better and I ain't gonna knock her for it. You ride out for me, sis. You do what you supposed, you, you do what you know, what you think you doing or what you think you know to do to help me out. Like I can't even be mad at it. That's a very innocent act that your body takes on behalf of you because mentally you hurt. Mentally you 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 wound it up. You know what I'm saying? You wound it up out here, okay? So the second sign that you have a mother wound is that you're insecure about your body or your physical appearance because you don't look like your mom or you don't uphold the beauty standards that your mom has. All right? And the last <clears throat> sign that you have a mother wound is that you're codependent in any type of ship okay in any type of ship you're codependent because your sense of value is dependent on someone else being present right so what codependency is codependency says i don't feel valuable enough by myself so i gotta get a person this cup is a person right what happened when i drink all this water but I ain't figured out how it's a well of water already inside me. When this cup run empty, I'ma lose my shit. Or when this cup gotta go away because it gotta go clean itself because now it's a dirty dish. And so it gotta go in the sink. It might be in the sink for a couple of days. I might not see that cup for a week or two because it's off doing this thing getting clean, i.e. another person. What happens when you kick it with somebody and they gotta go off and do their own thing or they gotta go, gotta go have their own life and their own experiences and you freak out? And you lose your shit because you don't know how to act. Because you think your sense of value is being taken away from you. Or you feel like your sense of, like all of a sudden, because your sense of value got to go take care of itself. So that make you, so now you make that mean something about you. You see what I'm saying? That's what codependency is. And when you have a mother wound, you're normally codependent. And, and this sounds crazy and it almost sounds counterintuitive because it's like, man, if I'm an adult and I'm wounded by my mama, why on God's green earth would I ever be codependent upon her? Well, because of what I just said, because 
Because if your mama don't emotionally invest in you, you are going to do things that get her to invest in you in other ways. So that means you gotta spend a lot of time around her. You gotta try to talk to her. You gotta shuck and job and kind of be in her face. Because if you didn't, how you gonna get your sense of value? Cause your sense of value is wrapped up in maybe her opinions or being around her or talking to her. You see what I'm saying? Like this stuff is juicy and it's very insidious. It's very creepy lurking in the corners. I don't know this is what's wrong with me. And that's why I was like, yo, I got to talk about this or I got to make a video about this. I got to talk about what a mother wound is because so many of us experience this in silence. Right? I feel like I feel like I want to say that it's a part of the black woman's experience to suffer in silence. But I mean at the end of the day, we all out here going through this human condition stuff and we all out here suffering in silence. So many of us have horrible stories about our experiences with our mothers, but either we feel like we bad mouthing our mamas and we don't want to talk about it, or we feel like we alone and ain't nobody going to understand, right? So, them two things I just said right there, you could be purple or blue and probably still experience that, right? So that just goes to show none of us are sharing our stories enough. None of us are connecting enough to help each other navigate this. Cause we ain't supposed to navigate this by ourselves. cause we ain't create the bullshit by ourselves. So no, your mama may not be able to help you, but a sister cat up the street who know what you're going through may be able to, but y'all gonna never know because we too busy keeping our stories to ourselves, but not me. All of this done happened to me. My mama that made me feel all this. I, from age, Cause consciously, now I'm talking conscious, from age 20 to 30, I felt like a piece of garbage. But y'all see me out here working, y'all see me trying, y'all seen Garuji, but to the core, I'ma keep 100, to the core, I woke up every day and played Russian roulette. I didn't know if I had what it takes to feel something about myself or if I was just gonna spend my entire day fighting against the fact that I feel like a piece of shit. And I don't have nobody in my life to invest in me to tell me I'm worth my weight in gold. Just think about that. Think about that. I, I, I mean, for me personally, I'm going to keep it 100. I grew up throughout my life feeling very invaluable. Feeling like it didn't matter if I live or die. And I did not have my mom to just come and say, hey, bro, you did a good job. Or I believe in you. Or I love you. Like, I never experienced that. And so I went through life trying to hide the fact that I felt so worthless, but did so much shit to bring value and add value to myself. And it wasn't until I really turned 30 that I was able to integrate and apply this stuff. I knew all this information, but being able to do it, you can miss me with it because I was so hurt. I was so devastated because I felt like it was my fault. I felt like there was, not only did I feel like it was my fault that, that my mom didn't emotionally invest in me, I thought it was something that I could do. And until I realized those two things, that it wasn't my fault that she didn't emotionally invest in me and there ain't a damn thing I can do. It was only in the fact that I looked at that and I released that, that I set myself free. But before them two things, I was trapped by these three symptoms that we just talked about. You see what I'm saying? So let's talk about three ways that you can heal your abandonment wound. So if I said, or if, if you heard back the three symptoms of a mother wound and they resonated with you, here are three quick tips that you can use to begin to heal, right? To not be plagued by these three symptoms of this wound. And this plagues you every day. Like, and I mean every day. So you want to begin to heal your abandonment wound by setting healthy boundaries. A lot of times we fear setting boundaries because we fear losing or missing out on love. But hear me out. It's, I, we would rather, I would rather, as your sister, I would rather you set the doctor's appointment and realize that you have cancer than to never set the doctor's appointment and just be suffering. Just the cancer eating away at your body and you think it's normal and you try to function against sickness. That's what this is. Abandonment is a sickness that needs to be healed and eradicated out of you. And so the first thing that you want to do is set those boundaries. Go to that doctor's appointment, right? And what that looks like is that sometimes people might not be okay with that. And you actually might lose out on love. You might find out that there is a cancer in you, right? I.e. a person. 
And if you don't set those boundaries, you won't know that that person is a cancer and you need to get them out, right? So don't, so, so don't shy away from every single opportunity that is presented to you to say no, or to say, I don't like that. Can we try this? Or this makes me feel this. Don't run from those opportunities. To heal abandonment wound, you have to take every opportunity to go see that doctor. To go, and seeing that doctor is taking every opportunity to just, to just be honest about how you feel with yourself or whoever you gotta set the boundary with. You know what I'm saying? And setting boundaries isn't always with another human. It could be with a, a, a inanimate object you're depending on. It could be your environment in itself. You see what I'm saying? Tip number two, develop a healthy connection with your with food and your body. I will say, food was difficult for me until I stopped. Literally stopped eating everything I knew to be true and I ate very counterintuitive to what I knew or what I was taught. I'm a frugivore. Most of my diet right now is just all fruit, right? It wasn't until I made a healthy choice about food that really resonated with me that I start to feel good in my body no matter what I was doing, no matter if I exercise, no matter if I stretch, no matter none of that, right? And so begin to develop a relationship with food that works for you. Food for me was like a chore. It was like, I'm not really hungry, but I don't know what to eat and I gotta eat, so I gotta go to the store. Or when it wasn't a chore, it's like, okay, so I'm, I'm supposed to have groceries in my house, otherwise that mean I'm broke. So I go out and buy all the groceries, but feel so disconnected from my food that I sit and waste it and I never eat it, right? And it wasn't until that I only ate apples, oranges, and grapes in my main diet, or excuse me, I don't even eat grapes, I'm lying. Apples, oranges, and bananas. It wasn't until I started picking, no, I actually want those apples, oranges, and bananas, did I start to appreciate the time that I used to prepare food, if that was a juice, or if I'm packing me a lunch, right? I, I didn't enjoy none of this stuff until I really sat down and evaluated what, what, what healthy looked like for me. Not like what the world doing, not like who I'm trying to look like, not like what I've seen, but what feel good for me. You see what I'm saying? And then last but not least, the last tip is learn to define your worth outside of your five senses. You should be able to say, damn, I feel good about myself because I can do X, Y, and Z, or I have access to X, Y, and Z that has nothing to do with your hands, with your mouth, with your ears, with your eyes. Like, if you gotta say, oh, I made this or something, if it's something external that adds value, you, you gotta do better. If you say, like for me, I'ma just start naming off stuff. I can't say that I rock with Chastity because she can draw. Again, it's something physical. Just like, okay, for instance, this would be getting me. When I when I would like want to know what my mama liked about me as a person, the only thing that she could tell me is like shit I could do physically. Like, you're a hard worker. <laughs> you, you, you are responsible with stuff. Um, you're good at drawing. Um, you're creative. Like she was just naming off shit that like you you could say about a stranger if you talk about yourself like that like oh i'm creative or i'm good at cleaning or i'm good at doing this and this like you missing the mark you want to know what you bring to the table if you just showed up as yourself and you should know that you should be able to describe yourself talk about yourself you should talk about your inherent value without doing nothing because as human beings because god dwells in every single one of us we have inherent value without doing anything you not you should have at least one person in your life and your and then yourself included who should be able to tell you why the world is beautiful because you exist you know what I'm saying? And if you can't if you can't sit down and think to yourself like, man, I make the world a better place because I show up with love, because I try my best, because I'm kind hearted, because no matter what, I always want to do better, because I'm always open to learn and grow, because I am fucking adorable, because I'm precious, right? Because God moves within me and it's that God that's in me that makes me divine, that makes me 
love myself. Like if you can't fervently talk about the preciousness that is you, we got a problem fam. And we need to rework the plan. So start getting comfortable about what is my inherent value if I don't do nothing. Cause I'm still hot if I don't do nothing. Right? If I don't do, if you don't do nothing, fam, you still hot. I still love you. I still want the world for you. You still deserve everything that you can think of, that you can fathom. If you did nothing, you still deserve all that. I still love you. You see what I'm saying? And you should know this about yourself, right? And so I've really enjoyed this video, fam. If you can't take shit, okay? And so today we talked about three symptoms of a mother wound. And this is important because if you don't know you got one, you could be suffering in silence. I don't need you out there having cancer, fam, and we don't know you out there sick. Come see about a doctor. I'm not a doctor, but I'm your spiritual little, your little woo-woo doctor. You know what I'm saying? Your little witch doctor. <laughs> I gotta get out of here. As always, fam, I love you. Peace out.